All right, Nuggets, London. Okay, so just got back from New York and we're here for three, two and a half days and we fly to London. Um, I'm from London originally and uh, I've been back a couple of times in the last 20 something years, 23 years. Um, it's the first time I got it since I got my citizenship and I fucked up because I didn't apply for my passport in time. I thought I had actually and I don't know, I screwed up. But now I have applied, but I'm going to have to fly on my British passport. I was kind of excited to fly on my American passport, but it's not to be. So we're going to London. Here's why. We're going to the premiere, the London premiere of Frozen 2. Um, and the that's happened in Rome, in Paris. They go, they're going all over. The people who are involved are going all over. Um, but we are, we know Jennifer Lee, who was the writer of Frozen, is the writer of Frozen 2, Wreck It Ralph, Ralph Breaks the Inn, tons of, tons of uh, Disney movies, and is uh, the CCO of Disney, which is chief creative officer and we knew her before that we've known her for a few years now so we knew her when she got that promotion so it's very exciting right but she can take people to the premiere right um i think two people and she offered me and laura and it was it was interesting because when she first asked us we went out to dinner to celebrate her birthday and she first asked us and um we were like, oh, that's, that's great, you know, and we kind of moved on to something else. And my ego started getting in the way. I was thinking about it, and I got through this very complex, probably, I don't know, it's probably really annoying for Laura, um, because I go through this bullshit, humble approach towards things, which sometimes just feels like it's actually very self-serving, and it's asking for pity, or it's asking to be liked. But... I was concerned, firstly, because my ego gets in the way of taking charity, right? And then the second thing is, with her new promotion to being CCO, I would imagine, I don't know her well, but I would imagine that she, a ton of the relationships she now has to navigate through are laden with ulterior motives, right? People wanting power. I mean, she's the CCO of Disney Animation. It's pretty fucking big. She's way up the chain. Her her boss is Bob Eisner, I think. I don't know. There might be people in between, but she, you know, she's up there, right? So I'm worried that she she constantly has to judge whether or not a relationship is honest and true, right? And I don't ever want her to think that we're we're that in any way. I mean, like if she was cleaning streets, we'd love her, right? We don't care. We we just like her. Um, she's funny and smart and intelligent and, and, and driven and she's a success story and it's exciting to be around her and to, to get her energy and she's very humble and very human and, and she's also sometimes like I can't believe where I am look what's going on you know it's wonderful it's actually a beautiful thing to watch you know someone with that much power and control and has been that successful I think the rest of us tend to always put them into a pigeonhole where we're like, well, they probably did something shitty. They probably stepped on people. We don't like them because of their power. And Jennifer is a good example of how that's not true. She's a lovely human being. She's one of us. She's just done really well and deserved to get where she got to. So anyway, she offered this to us. And it took me a few days. of, And I sent her an email and tried to explain, look, this is what I'm going through. And like, and my ego got in the way, but I also don't ever want to kind of mess up any idea of what this friendship is and if i take something like you flying us to london putting us up in a hotel um then i'm worried that that might muddy the waters you know i'd like our relationship to be very crystal clear you know where we stand we're friends that's it no matter what happens we're friends right it's very self aggrand not grandizing i can't think of the word i'm blanking on it now but it's very self-serving at, at the very least it's like um meek it's annoyingly meek, I think. Um, but she wrote back and saying, I'm so sorry, I didn't make want to make you feel that way. And I'm like, you didn't. It's not you. This is all me. Anyway, we figured it out. And in the end, and she said like, hey, you know, Disney's paying for this. I'm not paying out of my own pocket. She would. I know she would. But she's not. Disney are paying for this. So in the end, Laura really wants to go. She's like, I think it's important that we're there to support her. You know, she's family to us. We've we got to support her. We've got to be there and, and enjoy these moments with her because she's going to be, you know, it's difficult to be out there on your own. Um, you know, she's going on the tour with, with, with some other people and stuff, but 
you know, she's uh, on that night. I think it's just her. You know, even her assistant is who's awesome. It's fantastic. I don't think she's there. So we're going to go. So we said yes. So then her assistant. Successful people have assistants. It's awesome. So then her assistant sets us up. She says, "I'll get all the details. I'll send you the flight details. We're going to have a car." pick you up from your house, take you to the airport, a car from the airport in London to the to the hotel. So we're getting treated like royalty. It's amazing. So we get the ticket to British Airways. British Airways, which uh, I've flown for. I like them. I don't like what they did to Virgin. Google that. Uh, There's some shitty stuff. But as an airline, they're very good, right? Um, so I'm very excited about it. So we look at the ticket. We go online and we're, we're checking, you know, where to go to and all that stuff. It's business class. <laughs> now, I happen to know the price difference. I mean, I'm sure it's Disney. They probably don't look at that stuff because they have so much money. But I do know the price difference between a regular ticket to London from LA and a, and a, a business class ticket. And the price difference is $9,000, which is basically my travel budget for the rest of my life, right? Um, that's not true. We've, we've had some business class flights before. But I've never done... I mean, to go to... I have actually done business class before. But anyway, the point was we so weren't expecting it. And now Laura and I are like kids. We're just so excited. We can't wait to get on the plane. Because I was dreading it. 11 hours on a plane is tough. Or 10 hours, whatever it is. It's really tough, man. In a tiny little seat. And I'm a fat bloke as well. It's tough for me. Imagine how tough it is with a poor fucker sitting next to me, right? Which I always feel terribly guilty about that. In fact, flight travel when you're fat. I'm not asking for sympathy. This is my bag, but when you're fat, the seatbelt does a lot more than keep you safe during a crash. The seatbelt is also where you put your arms to try and yank your body in, like this, look, there we go, like that, so that I'm not basically invading this poor person sitting next to me or wherever they are, you know. So I always try and get an aisle in the window seat. Obviously, everyone prefers those, but I also always do that so that I'm only bugging one person instead of two. If I'm in the middle, both of these people are fucked, right? So that's what the seatbelt's for for me. It's to stop me dying in a crash, but it's also to just kind of sleep like this so that I'm not fucking anyone up. So 11 hours is hell. Absolute hell. In fact, it's one of the stimuli that makes me want to lose weight. When if I have a flight coming up, I'm like, I've got to lose weight. I've got to lose weight. When's the flight tomorrow? I've got to lose weight. I've got to lose weight. Um, so anyway, the flying's out business class, which leaves all of that putting us up in this beautiful hotel called the Corinthian. I think it's called the Corinthian in White Whitehall. Uh, so we're going back to London to be at the premiere. I have to get my suit cleaned. Well, my suit's clean, but I have to wear a suit. I hate suits. I hate suits. Is there a fat person in the world who likes suits? If you are, let me know how you do it. It fits. It's not that. It fits my suit. It's just, it's just horrible. It's in the shoulders and you know, suit material is like, it's very flexible and it goes roughly where your body tells it to, but there are limits. There are physical limits to what a suit can do. And I've got like bits of my armpit hanging over that side and that side and I've got, it's fucking horrible. It's a, it's a chaos when I'm in a suit, absolute chaos. So I've got to wear a suit, I've got to do all that stuff. Uh, but we're going for five days, four days, three days, wait. We land, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, four days, four days, three and a half days because we, uh, we get there midway through Thursday. So very excited. Hotel's beautiful. It's in Whitehall. It's in the middle of it all. Laura's excited about having fish and chips. I keep trying to talk her down saying like, it's, you know, I know we talk about fish and chips a lot. We English. It's not good. I mean, it's not, it's not going to blow your mind. You're not going to read it and go, oh my God, it's the greatest thing ever. It's just that when I was growing up, in comparison to everything else, that was gourmet because England up until the last, I don't know, 20 years or so, it's fucking terrible food everywhere you go, right? Um, and fish and chips was at the top of the pile because you can't, can't go wrong with fried potatoes and fish in batter. I mean, how can you go wrong with that? So she's excited about that. I'm excited about going to a pub for a pint. Laura doesn't drink, so she might keep me company. I might go on my own. I'm really excited about that. I'm looking forward to having a sausage roll, a Marks and Spencer sausage roll, one of the little tiny ones. Oh, God, I love those sausage rolls. Uh, I'm looking forward to walking. My New York trip sorted me out on the walking. I can do a lot of walking. Seeing the underground and just generally being in London. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to rain because it's London. Um, 
Hopefully it'll be clean on the premiere. But we're going to a premiere. We might even walk the red carpet. There might even be a photograph of us in the press. I hope not. I really hope not. I hate having my photograph taken, you know, because... Just hate it. Hate having my photograph taken. But, um, and a big smile can only get you so far. But we're going to probably walk the red carpet. We're going to uh, hopefully make her the night for her even better than it already will be. She'll have done a few of them by then. So she's probably bored of it. So we'll try and make this one a little bit more special. Make her laugh for three hours. Um, yeah, and that's it. We're excited. We're tired. Just got back from New York, so we're tired. But we're packing. We're ready to go again. We're going to miss our dogs terribly. Um, it's weird, man. Seven days in New York. By day four, we were like missing our dogs so much. So much. Um, they really do become kids. I know that's a ridiculous thing to say if you have kids. But if you don't have kids, they do become kids. You know, They become such an important part of your life. Uh, so we miss them terribly. So we're going to miss them for this. But then we get back and back on the horse. All right. That was it. That's London. That's why we're going. I've got to do more New York stories. I just thought of another one. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. The businessman. I don't know. I'm just going to give you titles and you'll have to guess what it is. I have a businessman story. A homeless businessman story. That was amazing. And then um, also the update to the pilot that that guy, whoever you are, you're awesome. Thank you for asking me. I feel special. I feel like someone cares about my life. All right. All right, you little nuggets. Have a good day. Bye.